In this video, we're going to look at a descriptive type question involving the angular equations of motion. So one of the key things that we need to be able to do here is extract the key information from the descriptions. So as we go through, we're going to list the key information. So first of all, it says the drive shaft of a machine is connected to a pulley of radius 15 centimeters. So we have a pulley, and that pulley has a radius of 15 centimeters. The pulley is used to drive a timing belt. So what we basically have is we have a timing belt that goes around our pulley. And all a timing belt does is ensure that two components rotate at the same rotational speed or rotate at speeds in ratios to each other. It then goes on to say a torque is applied by the motor in the machine such that the drive shaft accelerates at 25 rads per second squared. So it's given us the angular acceleration of our drive shaft which will also be the angular acceleration of our pulley. And that is 25 rads per second squared. And it gives us the time that it accelerates for, three seconds up to a final velocity of 1550 RPM. So it's accelerating for three seconds and the final velocity is 1550 RPM. So we have all of our key information from the question, but we need to do a few things. We need to make sure that everything there is in SI units. So our radius of 15 centimetres, when converted to metres, we divide by 100 to get from centimetres to metres, giving us 0.15 metres. Alpha is in radians per second squared, and you'll recall from the earlier video that that's already the SI units of acceleration. So we don't need to change that and our time of three seconds is also in SI units. However, our final velocity omega is not in SI units, that needs to be converted to rads per second. And you'll recall that our conversion factor is to times by two pi to get from revolutions to radians, and then divide by 60 to get from minutes to seconds. So 1550 times two pi over 60 gives us an angular velocity of 162.32 rads per second in SI units. So now all of our variables are in the correct form to be inputted into our equations. So if we refer back to the question, part A says, what was the speed of the shaft in RPM prior to the acceleration? So we need the speed of the shaft prior to the acceleration. So it's referring to omega zero, the initial angular velocity, and it wants that in RPM. Now we're going to need to work in SI units. So first of all, we'll calculate our initial velocity in radians per second, and then we'll convert it to RPM. It's important that we do it in that way, otherwise we won't get an accurate answer. We must always work in SI units. So the equation that I'm going to use to find initial velocity is alpha equals omega minus omega zero over t. And I want to get omega zero on its own. So the first thing I need to do to each side is times by t. And times in by t will give me alpha t equals omega minus omega zero. So the next thing I'm going to do to get omega zero on its own is I'm going to minus omega from each side. And I'm going to write this on the next line. That means minus omega zero, because I've minused omega, equals alpha t minus omega. Now you'll notice there that the thing we're trying to get on its own, omega zero, has a minus applied to it. So I need to change sign of each side. And when I change sign of each side, I need to change sign of each term. So that there is going to give me omega zero, the thing I'm trying to find, equals minus alpha t plus omega. I've changed the sign of each term. Now I can rewrite that just to make things a little bit neater. Omega zero equals omega minus alpha t. So now I can input my numbers. I must use omega in rads per second, so 162.32. And then I need to subtract alpha t. 
Well, alpha is given in the question as 25, and t is 3 seconds. So minus 25 times 3. Therefore, the original velocity, omega 0, is 162.32 minus 25 times 3, or minus 75, and that gives me 87.32. Rads per second. But we're not quite finished because the question asks us to express that in revolutions per minute. Now, down in the bottom left here, we have the conversion factor to go from RPM to rads per second. And if we want to go the opposite way, so rads per second to RPM, all we do is we flip that conversion factor or we invert it. So our conversion factor for rads per second to RPM, the thing we're trying to find, is going to be times 60 over 2 pi, the inverse. And 87.32 times 60 over 2 pi gives us a speed in revolutions per minute of 833.80. RPM. So we've found what part A is asking us for, the initial velocity of the shaft prior to the acceleration. So essentially what we're saying is that the shaft's accelerated from 833.8 RPM up to 1550 RPM in 3 seconds at a rate of 25 rads per second squared. Next the question asks us to calculate how many full revolutions of the shaft were completed during this acceleration. So when this shaft accelerated for 3 seconds, how many full revolutions did that shaft complete? So let's clear some space and then we can apply the equation. And our angular equation for this is theta equals omega 0 t plus a half alpha t squared. So we don't need to rearrange this. The thing we're trying to find is already the subject. So we can just input our values. So theta equals omega 0. We must use omega 0 in rads per second. So 87.32 times our time, which is given in the question as 3 seconds, plus a half times alpha, which is given in the question, 25 rads per second squared times our time of 3 seconds squared. And running that through our calculator gives us a value of theta equal to 374.5 radians. Remember, because we've worked in SI units, it will give us an answer in SI units. Now, we don't want that in radians. We want it in revolutions. And if you recall, one rev, or one revolution, is 2 pi radians, or rads. So to get from radians to revolutions, so going the opposite way, this way here, we need to divide by 2 pi. Well, 374.5 divided by 2 pi gives us 59 revs, or revolutions. And the question clearly states how many full revolutions of the shaft were completed during the acceleration. The answer is 59 to the nearest whole number. So we've done part B. And the final part asks us what was the initial and final linear velocity of the timing belt. Now if you recall, we've got a pulley that's rotating. So in the top right hand corner, we've got a circular pulley which is rotating. And as it rotates, it's driving a timing belt. Well, that timing belt is going to have a linear velocity. It's traveling in a linear direction. Now, fortunately, the equations for converting between linear and angular movement are very straightforward. So, for example, if we wanted to convert from angular displacement to linear displacement, we would use the equation S equals R theta. So we would multiply our angular displacement by our radius, and that would give us our linear displacement. This is one of the benefits of working in radians. Now the same is true for velocity. If we want the linear velocity, all we need to do is multiply angular velocity by the radius, 
And finally, the same is true for acceleration. If we want linear acceleration, which would be the linear acceleration of a point on the surface, or the linear acceleration of the surface, in this case the belt, and that would equal R alpha. So hopefully you can see our calculations here are very straightforward. We want the initial linear velocity of the belt, so V0, and we want the final velocity of the belt, V. So we're using our V equals R omega. And all we need to do is substitute in the corresponding values for omega in radians per second. So V0 is R omega zero. You'll recall from the question that the radius is 15 centimeters or 0.15 meters. So V0 is 0 0.15 times omega zero, which is 87.32, giving us an initial linear velocity of 13.1 meters per second. We can repeat the same for V because V is just R omega, which is 0.15 times 162.32. And multiplying that out this time gives us a final linear velocity of 24.3 meters per second. So the initial linear velocity was 13.1 meters per second. After the acceleration was complete, the linear velocity was 24.3 meters per second. And that's the solution to part C of our question, meaning we've fully answered each of the points A, B and C.